I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can have your own personal cloud consultant that's going to help you optimize Azure and save you a little bit of money as you go. So if you haven't done so already, please do click on the subscribe button and join us here at the Azure Academy community and leave us a comment down below with any questions that you have or something that you're interested in us making a video on in the future. Today, we're going to be digging into the Azure Advice and we have covered this somewhat briefly in the past, but I wanted to dig into this a little bit more because Azure Advisor has been updated recently and there are some great optimizations that are here that are going to help you to secure the cloud, increase your performance and help you to decrease cost in the cloud. And that's something that every one of us should constantly be interested in. So the advisor is not a thing that you go through once and you're done, but rather Rather, you should be revisiting it as often as you can just to keep in touch with what's going on because these are all built on Azure best practices that we've seen across hundreds of thousands of subscriptions. So let's jump over to the Azure portal. And if you do not have the Azure Advisor showing up here as a service at the top, you can find it by typing Advisor into the search bar or going to the All Services menu and you'll find the Advisor there as well. So when you open the advisor, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to scan your subscriptions that you have set up. And by default, if we click on the directory button here, this is the global filter. And it's going to look at whatever subscriptions that you've got registered in your global filter. And that's just by checking those off. And additionally, you can add whatever subscriptions you want more dynamically, but these are not part of your global filter. So you'd just be looking at them in this instance of the advisor. So you can see we have five basic areas that we cover in the Azure Advisor, and that is high availability, security, performance, operational excellence and cost. And like I said in the beginning, this is like having your own personal cloud consultant who understands the best practices of the cloud platform that you are using, as well as the recommendations to make you more secure or improve what it is that you're trying to do. So on top of these five areas, um, we also can look at all of the recommendations simultaneously and then see how many different resources are impacted and what our potential savings could be. And then we can scroll down the list and we see that they go from high to medium to low in their uh, impact. So I'm going to go back and start with high availability and we're just going to take a look at a lot of things here today and uh, maybe we'll actually execute on a few of these recommendations. Our first one here is a medium level high availability recommendation to enable Azure backup for our virtual machines to protect against corruption and deletion. And we have this impacting seven virtual machines. So if we click on this recommendation, we can see that our layout here covers two subscriptions and we're not grouping things in any way. These are our virtual machines and what subscription they're in. And we also have some actions and we can choose to postpone or dismiss this particular recommendation for each one of these systems individually. And of course, we can check the boxes and execute all of those things at once. So in particular, my Windows 7 and Windows 10 machine, I am not interested in backing those up at all. They are simply test boxes and they have no data on them whatsoever. So I'm going to dismiss that recommendation for those virtual machines and we can see that they are now gone. Where did they go? Here under the postpone and dismissed, we now have a number two. And if we click on that, we can see that there they are. And they are in a state of dismissed. Now, let me go back to the active screen here and I will do a postpone on my domain controller. And then we get a dialogue asking us how long we want to postpone for. And in this case, I'll say three months and hit postpone. So it disappears from our list and now we have three items. So if we click on that, we can see our state is postponed until three months from now. And then we have our dismissed state and all of them have an activate button. So if we decide in the future that, you know what, I really do want this particular virtual machine backed up. Let me activate this. Once we do, it will disappear from here and go back to the active screen. And there's our domain controller. So let's enable Azure backup here. 
So when we click on that link, it tells us that we need to choose an either existing backup vault or create a brand new one. So in my case, I do not have a current backup vault, so we'll create a new one and we'll put it into one of our existing resource groups here or Azure Management and we'll have it use a daily policy or we could edit and create a brand new policy, which is what I'll do. And I've renamed our policy here to our corp policy and we'll keep this in our universal time, but we'll change our backup period to 11 p.m. And we will keep our daily backups in this case for 20 days and then we'll create a weekly retention period for two weeks and a monthly retention period for six months and then a yearly backup based on our weekly backup and we'll keep that for 99 years and we'll hit OK to that and then we just need to click enable backup. So that is now going to go off on its own and create our backup vault and then it's going to add our virtual machine over to our Azure backup. So we'll come back and check on that guy later. And of course, we can repeat this process on all of these machines. Now, this recommendation that's here is certainly a good one. We have a whole series of videos on Azure Backup, which I'll link here in the card. You can go take a look at those. And the way I want you to approach this is you see this recommendation and you can act on it, of course, but you should look at this as a way to change what you're doing in the cloud. Don't just implement something and then forget it because it's going to come up again in the future. You are better off to take this recommendation and then add it to your process. For example, when I create virtual machines in the future, I should remember to enable Azure Backup or make it part of my ARM template deployment so that it gets enabled automatically. Now, I can also create alerts. So if I choose to not execute on setting this up for every other VM going forward programmatically, I can still create myself an alert and that alert is going to be selected by default in whatever screen I'm in, in this case, enable virtual machine backup. So that's my recommendation type and I'm going to set an alert for that. So all Azure alerts function the same way. They all process through the Azure monitor and they all function through action groups. And if you're unfamiliar with alerts, go back and watch our video on Azure monitor, which will be linked up in the card. So I'll click on select existing to select my action group. And then I need to just write in some details here for my alert. And we'll just call it enable Azure backup with a description of Azure backup was not enabled for this VM. And this rule will be enabled when we do create it. And then we need to save our alert somewhere. And I'll save that to my Azure management resource group. And we'll hit create alert. So that alert has now been created and we can manage those alerts up here in our manage alert window. And there it is. Okay, and we'll come back to this concept again as we go through this. So that was high availability. And of course we could dig into this next alert, uh, but it's going to follow the same basic process. We need an availability zone or availability set for our VMs to provide high availability. And then we can choose to enable that or postpone or dismiss these particular things as well as create alerts. So let's go to next the operational excellence section and we'll come back to security a little bit later. So operational excellence is going to be talking about things that are going to improve how you use the cloud. So think of this as like a governance section. And so it's giving us a suggestion here and it is a low impact suggestion that we create an Azure service health alert for one of our subscriptions. So we'll click on the link here to create a health service alert. And when we do, we have to then choose which services and regions we are concerned with. So I will just type in here US, since this is a subscription for all of my US assets. And I'll just check all of the US regions here. And there's in one more that we want to include as well. And that would be global. There are some resources that are global resources. They're not tied to a specific region. And then we have our services. And in this case, I'm going to leave all 156 selected, although I could just select the few that I'm interested in using, but just for time's sake. And then our event types would be service issues maintenance or health advisories and we'll leave those selected as well we'll pick our action group once again and then give it a title and description and then we'll choose our resource group to save it in this case Azure management and we'll hit create alert rule 
and we'll go back to our operational excellence section and then we'll go to cost. Now cost has to do with things that are running in your subscription either inefficiently or things that are not really being used and therefore they're costing you money without giving you any benefit. In this case, I have two public IP addresses that are not associated with Azure resources and it's suggesting that I delete them and by doing so over the year, I'll save $71. Now that may not seem like much, but consider if it was instead a virtual machine that was over provisioned and that virtual machine was costing you a thousand dollars a week. And then by resizing it, you could save $30,000 in the year, just as an example. So for this one, we'll click on delete the public IP addresses and I can choose to delete these public IP addresses by clicking on our recommended actions link and then choose to click the delete button. So I'll click yes here and then I'll go back and execute that on the other one as well. And we'll go back to our cost management. Now, you notice how the recommendation did not get removed after I did this process. That's because in the Azure portal, there is a polling mechanism that looks at the API of the Azure advisor every 15 minutes and updates your recommendations. So if you make a recommendation change in the portal like we have, you are not going to see that reflected right away. Okay, it will take up to 15 minutes or so before you see that. Now, if you are interacting with the advisor API, you will see this update instantaneously, but just through the portal, there is a delay. Now let's go to the security section since we overlooked that one earlier and security comes from the alerts that we get out of the Azure Security Center. So we have many things that are listed here, but the experience in the Azure Advisor is slightly different. So for example, uh, we have management port should be closed on your virtual machines. So if we click on that, we see a different layout experience. So this is giving us a description with some kind of general information. And then we have a threat section, which tells us that this particular thing is involved with threat resistance or a malicious insider. And then we have recommendation steps. Now, some of the recommendation steps will have a quick action button that you can press, but in other cases, they will have manual recommendations and then it does list us the resources that are involved with this particular incident and how we go about uh, remediating them so let's flip over to the Azure Security Center and we'll take a look at what that side of the experience looks like and the advisor section is really this middle one here resource security hygiene so if we click on compute and apps resources we see that same color coded list that we had in the advisor and we see what resources are impacted as well as how this would affect our security score. Obviously, the ones that are of greater severity would have a greater impact. Now, you can see here that we have some quick fix buttons and this is what I was alluding to a minute ago. So we'll click on our quick fix for diagnostic logs and the event hub should be enabled. And when we do, we're brought into what looks like the same advisor screen and we've got the threats here this is around data exfiltration especially then we have our remediation steps and if we click on the remediation logic we see some json code and this is going to be doing a template deployment and we've got three input parameters and we're deploying a resource here of the type of event hub diagnostic settings and then we're plugging in a bunch of metrics and then storing them. And then we're going to have a parameters section again. This is because of how we're executing this code. It's kind of like running policy code. So we'll hit close here now that we know what it's going to do. And we're going to run through the remediation process by checking our event hub and then clicking the remediate button. And when we do, we're presented with a dialogue. Now behind this dialogue is that code that we saw from the remediation logic. So it's asking us for how long we want to retain our data and we need a workspace ID and a resource, in this case, our event hub. So we'll click the drop down menu for our workspace ID and we'll choose our workspace workspace by name and then we'll hit remediate one resource and that process is now happening in the background. Now let's look at something that's going to take us a little more effort. 
So we have disk encryption should be applied on our virtual machines. And disk encryption is something that we have done a video on as well. So you can find that up in the card section. But the reason why I wanna look at this is there is a new twist on the disk encryption experience. So we'll click on that. And when we do, we see the list of the VMs that are not encrypted. I'm going to pick my domain controller. And then that brings us to the virtual machine experience. And over here, we're in the disk part of the blade and there is a encryption button that is now at the top here. So we'll click our encryption button and then we're presented with a dialogue in the portal as to which disks we want to enable for disk encryption. So we'll select our OS and data disks and then we're brought to a dialogue here where we can select our key vault. So I'm going to select the key vault that I want for my encryption and then I'll pick it from my dropdown and then select the particular key I want, in this case, just the test key, and then the version of the key that I like, and I'll hit the select button, and then we hit save, and this is going to now kick off Azure Disk Encryption. So we'll go back to our security center here, and then once they have been applied in the Azure Security Center in 15 minutes, they will then filter up to the Azure Advisor in the security section. Okay, and as you can see, our cost recommendations have disappeared from those two public IP addresses because we did delete those and it has been roughly 15 minutes since I did that. And so that has now updated in the Azure Advisor. So our last place to stop today is over in the monitoring alerts where you can manage all of your alerts like we did for Azure Backup. And we can take a look at our virtual machine, which was our domain controller. And if we scroll down here in the blade to backup, we can see that Azure Backup has indeed been enabled for Vault 403 for our court policy, just like we selected it to do in the Azure Advisor. And going back to the advisor one last time, we have a settings uh, configuration setting here. And this is going to take a look at all of the different resource groups because you can exclude resource groups from the Azure Advisor recommendations, although that is not recommended, but you can choose to do that if you want to. Perhaps you have uh, something like for testing that you don't wanna be bothered with any recommendations. So you could exclude those if you like. Additionally, we have some rules up here at the top, and this is important for understanding usage patterns, specifically for your virtual machines. Now I can choose to change this just by clicking the checkbox next to my subscription and clicking the edit button, and then change this to 10, 15, or 20%, and then that will apply to my subscription as a whole, and then it will refresh potentially my recommendations. Again, I may have to wait 15 minutes for that to show in the portal. And then the very last thing I promise is that you can download all of our recommendations as a PDF or as a CSV file, and then you can save those and uh, perhaps provide them for your uh, security folks. And then you can use this as a status update for what's going on in Azure and how you are continuously improving and securing Azure compared to uh, where you were last month or last quarter, whenever it was that you checked in. So I hope that you've enjoyed this brief look at the Azure Advisor. There is certainly more to dig into here, but uh, you think you get the general idea. Basically, the Advisor functions as your cloud consultant helping you to optimize Azure for anything that uh, you are currently doing and hopefully saving you some extra money in the process by right-sizing your virtual machines or removing resources that are no longer actively in use. So if you thought this video was good, please do click that thumbs up icon down below. And while you're down there, click on the subscribe button and join us here at the Azure Academy community. You can also click on the notification bell if you're interested in getting an email when our new videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And don't forget to leave us a comment below if this video was a help to you or with questions you have or something you'd like us to cover in the future. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.